This is the Lock Picking Lawyer, and the lock I have for you today is a Berg Wachter Model Gamma 700. This lock was sent to me by Joshua Hoffmeyer. So, Joshua, thank you very much for this absolutely beautiful lock. I decided to feature this lock today to showcase a picking te technique that I've never seen demonstrated in any other YouTube video. But before we get to that, a couple notes about this lock. It does have a few features that make it particularly difficult to pick open. First, we have security pins. We have both spooled key pins and driver pins. And with those spooled key pins, this lock is very unforgiving of oversets. Next, we have a very nice little paracentric keyway. And if you look in there pretty carefully, you can actually see a spooled key pin up front. And finally, this lock has a combination of good tolerances and sharp spools that make it very, very difficult to recover from a false set. And when I say recover from a false set, what I mean is you drop into your false set, you find the pin that's giving you feedback, you press on it, and the core just doesn't counter rotate. So what do you do in a scenario like that? Well, conventional wisdom would have you use what people call the dual tension wrench technique. And as the name implies, it means you use two tension wrenches. You put them in essentially wherever you can fit them in the keyway. And because you have two of them tensioned in opposite directions, you have perfect control over the rotation and counter rotation of the core. And even though that pin is not counter rotating the core, you can manually do it with your second tension wrench. It's a great technique. It works very, very well. However, when you're trying to pick a padlock in your hand, unless you're an octopus, it's really, really unwieldy and just doesn't work very well. I recently saw Potty314 apply a technique that he developed, and that was to put a normal tension wrench in and then rubber band it to his finger such that when you press with the finger, it applies normal rotation and when you pull with the finger, since it's attached to your tension wrench, you get counter rotation. It looked like it worked absolutely beautifully for him. And the only word of caution I would have about it is you really do need a tension wrench that fits snugly in the keyway. Because if there's any slop there, you'll just end up dropping a lot of pins when you try to count manually counter rotate it. That brings you, me to my technique on this. And it's a technique that I developed for picking dimple padlocks. Now on some dimple padlocks, they have particularly nasty cores. This is an Abus. And if you look in there and think about where you would insert the pick and where you would insert the tension wrench, this lock requires you to pick in the rotational direction and tension both clockwise. And what that means is that once you go into a false set and this lock is full of spools, your picking motion is always opposite of the counter rotation you're trying to induce, making recovery from a false set almost impossible. So how do I deal with that? Well, what I do is I pick the lock in such an order that you never get into a false set. And you say, well, you know, how could you possibly do that? You need to know what's in there. You need to experiment. And yeah, that's the answer. But it's not as hard as you might think it is. And it actually works beautifully on this Gamma 700. So let's give it a shot, opening this lock up, and I'll take you through the full sequence of what I would do attacking a lock like this. OK, I put my tension wrench in. And what I'm going to do is start picking this until I get to a false set. And on this lock, let's see. OK, we got past a spool in one. Got past a spool in two. Still no false set. Another spool in three. Another spool in four. OK, I hit five. Just barely touched it, and we went into a false set. So. What I know right now is that I have spools in at least one through four, and I have something in pin five that if I touch it after picking those front four spools, I'll drop into a false set. So I'm going to do the exact same thing again, 
except I am going to skip pin number five. So let's reset the lock. And okay, got one, two, I just heard one drop. It's a little sloppy with my tension there. Okay, got one back, two still set. Got three, got four. Okay, now remember we're gonna skip five. So let me maneuver my pick around five. And let's try to get six. And there we go, we just opened it up. Now, it worked a little bit easier on this lock than you will find it working on most others, but not a whole lot so. Usually, you would think just listening to that technique that it takes a lot of work, a lot of trial and error. Not really, it usually only takes you maybe two, three, at most four times through the pin stack and you can get it open. So it does take a little bit longer, but it has the advantage in my mind of using traditional tools being relatively easy and well getting the lock open so that's all i have for you on this berg Vachter gamma 700 and my different little technique for getting past pins that will not counter rotate joshua thank you very much for this lock to everyone else if you have any questions or comments about this video please put them below if you like the video and would like to see more like it, please subscribe, and as always, have a nice day. Thank you.